Hi, we have here a problem with pulleys. We are working in the chapter trying to solve this problem by relating work and energy using the principle of work and energy. We are being asked the distance of B has traveled when it's released from rest. Why do we use the principle of work and energy? Because we are relating here speed, which is the speed of B and the speed of A, the um, distance, the distance travels, so they ask us, we can imagine this is much heavier than that, so that goes down a distance. They want us to find the di that displacement when it reaches a velocity of two meters per second. What do we do here? First of all, I like to understand how this move, and we see that the motion it requires, it has only one degree of freedom. It means with only one variable, I can relate all the motion of the system. So it means that the velocity of B is related to the velocity of A. So as soon as B goes down, B, A goes up. How much does it? Well, let's relate them. So if we put our datum over here, let me name this variable S, B, Let's call it, this is what we are, let's call this HB, which is what is going down, what is what we want to find. And then let's call this SA. That's how we learn how to relate both variables, right? And if we want to relate the, these two variables or the whole string which is connected, we see here that we have one, two, three, four, SB plus one SA is equals to the total string, right? We can say that if, since the string is a constant, the length of the string is a constant, we know that the variation of those distance will give me zero. It's like deriving that distance, right? It's like the relative velocity between that one and that one. I can also find with this equation, so if I actually derive respect to time, I can have that the velocity plus the velocity of A is equal to zero. So here I already get that the velocity of B will be equal to negative the velocity of A. What does that mean? It means that when my block B goes down, then my block A goes up, which makes sense, right? The principle of work and energy, the way that I like to write it, is forces not conservative forces equals to T2 plus V2 minus T1 plus V1. What forces do we have here? Let's do the free body diagram of the whole system just to know if we have any non-conservative forces that we have to take into consideration. So if we do the whole system, let me... So we have one pulley over here, another pulley over here, and the string. And the forces that we have, this is attached, the forces that we have are both weights, weight B, weight A, and then we have a tension, and we have the reaction forces of these two pins. Uh, obviously, this since it, uh, all the motion occurs in, in the vertical direction, those those two reactions in horizontal will be zero, but let's just give them a name, the y and the, and for the purpose of seeing the work, we see that those forces, d, d, y, d, x, c, y, and c, x, do not work. Why? Because there is no displacement between those forces and the actual um, force, right? So by the definition of work, which is force times displacement, if there is no displacement, there is no work. So the only work is done by the weight, and the weight can be considered conservative forces. Forces. So I'm going to calculate that work as potential energy. I can say that this is equal to zero. So 
Now we analyze our position, so in position one, they say they start from rest, so all the kinetic energy is equal to zero. And the potential energy depends on, on the, on the datum that I put. If I, I can put two datums, different datums for B and A, so because since they move different, using that datum, I will have to find the, the relative distance, and since I don't have the length of the cord, I'd rather put two datums, one for A, one for B, so I'm going to put my datum over here, datum for A. So my potential energy, which is the potential energy of the weight B and the potential energy of the weight A, both are equals to zero because I put the datums in the first position. For position two, kinetic energy will be equals to the kinetic energy of block A plus kinetic energy of block B, right? Because both are moving. So the, it will be mass of block A, velocity of A, plus mass of B, velocity of B. And we could relate those velocities. We have already a relationship right here. And we should relate them because otherwise we will have only one equation. This represents only one equation. So, and we have to have only one unknown. Here we have two unknowns, but they are related with a kinematic expression. So T2 will be equal to, to mass A. The velocity of A is four times the velocity of B square mass B velocity of B. Square. So we already have this over here, and then we need to find the potential energy, and the potential energy will be equal as well to the potential energy of a weight B plus potential energy of weight A, right? And that will be equal to mass B, gravity, height of B plus, and as you see, the block B is going down so this is negative, it's losing potential energy respect to the datum that we put here. And block A is rising. I am gaining potential energy, so this is positive. So this is a negative value and this is a positive value. M-A-G-H-A. -A. As the same way that we did for the velocities, we know here they are related. So we see that when this goes down four this goes on up. So that sign could have come also from this equation, as you see, but I took that into consideration already that they are opposite. So I would say that the potential energy in two is equals to the mass GHB plus MA G4HB. So we plug those two values in our equation. So we say that those two are zero. And we end up only with those two. And so substituting, we have one half mass A is equals to 10. Here I have a 16. The velocity is now 2 squared plus one half 100 times 2 squared plus this one right here, which means negative 100. I'm going to take, this is my unknown, so I take it, I will take it out. So times the gravity. Plus mass A times the gravity for, and all that HB is equal to zero. So it's very easy to solve for HB. I just pass that to the other side of the equation, divided by that, and I get that HP is equals to 0 0.88 meters. When the block B reached a velocity of two meters times per second, it was when it went down to 0 0.88 meters.